Hello everyone, Just Goron here and welcome to Geofu Park, which is a zoo made by Carlos G72. And in case you don't know Carlos, uh, you probably do know his amazing dinosaur fossils that he made for the museum of this zoo. I'll leave a link to Carlos, his workshop page in the description. Uh, but we are here because Carlos has asked me to build a stall for the soon to be Indian rhino enclosure, which you can see over here. Because I tried to make this stall as realistic as I possibly could, uh, I invited a very special guest today, Rick Merckx, who is a designer at Liebema, the company who owns the Beeksbergen, among several other zoos. Um, and he's going to tell me how well I did. So Rick, if you would like to introduce yourself. Well, you introduced me very well, so <laughs> thank you for that. But uh, indeed, I'm the designer of uh, Libema Zoos. Actually, I'm the designer of all the amusement parks we have. Yeah, we uh, we build a Indian rhino stable and enclosure in uh, Dierenrijk in, back in 2019. So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to advise you in uh, maybe some optimizations uh, yeah. for, 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 the, for the stables. Yeah, because I was going to ask uh, if you were also involved in, in that project, of course. And it sounds like you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were going to interview me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I was involved indeed. Yeah, I was the, the head of design of that project. Uh, but for the stables, of course, there's also uh, zookeepers involved, especially the stables are always in every project designed in a lot of cooperation with the zoo uh, yeah. keepers. Yeah. So, of course, for this uh, stable we're going to look at right now, uh, it's all built by me <laughs> in, a, in about three days. So, uh, probably not the amount of uh, optimization you would see in a final product. But let's uh, head inside through the main door. And uh, the layout is kind of based on that of the wow. egg, So, you're probably going to recognize some of it, at least for the stables themselves. Yeah, some ideas like all the, the logs in all the, the bars here. Dierenrijk has as well. What are those rings, uh, uh, Jurian? You can put a rope through it so that if there's any cows that are ah. just born, uh, they can't escape okay. through the bars. It's a very nice detail. Yeah, that's uh, of course one of my favorite videos from uh, the stalls at the Beekse Bergen. Is uh, Jacques Kandorf sitting there explaining, <laughs> talking yeah, about the, the little baby It's an all-time <laughs> favorite, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so for the people watching, uh, I made heavy use of the husbandry manual of the mm -hmm. um, Indian rhino or the greater ho one-horned rhino, as they're also called, I think. And the husbandry manual goes into great depth uh, on mm -hmm. all sorts of things that you need to take into account when uh, building a stall like this, such as the amount of space between all the bars, the material that the flooring needs to be made out of, which mm -hmm. uh, was quite a pain. Uh, because the Indian rhinos have very sensitive feet, I've read, mm -hmm. uh, which can really easily be infected and, uh, if they don't have a nice soft surface. So they recommend that you use wood chips, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the game doesn't really have wood chips, uh, except for the paths. So I had to kind of put a path oh. in the exact shape of the uh, stable here. Well, it looks really effect. good, so that's, so that's good. Actually, uh, maybe it's nice to know that even for the outdoor enclosure, you have to uh, make half of the surface uh, out of wood chips. Oh, wow. And is, that, is that a lot of maintenance to maintain all of that? Or do you... Uh, well, that depends on uh, which animals you want to mix with your Indian rhinos. So in Dierreich, we also put uh, Visayan wadi pigs in, uh, in the enclosure. And uh, of course, Visayan wadi pigs are like all wadi pigs or all pigs. <laughs> and so they will shovel up all of the wood chips. So you, yeah. you, you definitely have to, uh, every once in a while, uh, enter the enclosure and make it uh, look very nice again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also read in the husband animal that the rhinos tend to poop in the same spot often, so they can put yeah. up a little board or plank to make it a little bit easier to clean compared yeah. to the wood chips. So that's what we have <laughs> over here. It's like a rhino toilet. <laughs> yeah, it is. So uh, about the layout, so that's pretty much taken straight from uh, Dier Reich. We've got two stalls and uh, the little pool in the middle. Yeah. The feeders that we have are taken kind of from the husbandry manual. Uh, I think the husbandry manual had pictures of zoo basil. And what's kind of interesting to note is that there's a bit more space between the bars for the feeders. So that, of course, yeah. the rhino can put their head 
all the way through. Actually, this this technique you used is very nice. Uh, so the, the the zookeepers can put the hay into the feeders through this yeah. hole in the in the in, in the, the in the wall. Yeah, yeah, and it also provides uh, a very nice view into the stalls yeah, yeah. from yeah, I was uh, from the that spot. when you enter the stall. Yeah, the stables. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and also here at the other stable, because of course every stable needs to have a feeder. This one was a little bit more difficult to uh, figure out, but I thought this little hole over here gives enough. Uh, yeah. Now the only question I would have was how is the zookeeper going to provide the hay in the back of the feeder? Yeah, yeah, they've got to throw it a little bit. Have it throw the hay, uh, Jurien? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or they might uh, be able to step over this little curb, because of course, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you fill it while the rhinos are not uh, inside. Because I read, I don't know if that how accurate I was in thinking that, but I read that one of the reasons you might want to have this much space still between the bars uh, is also that you as a zookeeper can actually walk through them yeah, and, and get yeah, out yeah. of the stable easily. Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry, I'm sorry. No, um, that depends on the zoo, because as a zoo, you may choose yourself if you want to have an on-hand or off-hand caretaking. And at all Libema zoos, we chose to have an off-hand uh, caretaking. So our zookeepers will never get into the stables, uh, but there are zoos where they will. And then, yeah. indeed, it's easier to step through uh, the barrier as a zookeeper, it's, it's it's like a safety issue. But we did put these as close together that we made sure the rhino can't put all of his hat through it. Mm -hmm. And also a zookeeper wouldn't step through it into the exhibit. When the rhino is inside. When the rhino is inside, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the uh, things which is nice at the barrier in Die Rijk, is that these wooden locks, they are able to turn around so mm. when a when a rhino is going with his head through it, the the trunks will uh, get, give a little width, and when he puts it back, the logs are also turning uh, back. So, okay. and that's especially nice because uh, they really like to shrub, and uh, mm -hmm. the shrubbing is a, a lot easier and a lot uh, comfortable. I, I don't know if I you I'm using the right English <laughs> words, but. They really like it when the when the logs are are uh, swinging a little, and uh, also that would mean that in your uh, design these rings couldn't be attached to the logs, right? Because the the rings will turn around with, yeah, <laughs> and that's gonna make some trouble. So I would recommend to think wisely if you want to attach the logs so, firmly yeah, or have yeah, are the, are these logs uh, adjusted to the to the concrete in the in the in the bottom? Uh, I think that is what I envisioned, yes. Okay, because that's that's also a main entrance uh, issue, because uh, Indian rhinos, they like to pee a lot, and uh, right. they also will pee uh, at the locks, and um, uh, when you put them into the concrete, you you have a main, main entrance issue, because mm -hmm. they will rot around the, the, the bottom of the, yeah. of the lock. So it's, it's best to, when you use wood, in a stable to uh, get a little a bit of the ground, which you very nicely did with the logs in the background. Yeah. Uh, th this is a very nice uh, application <laughs> of logs uh, in the wall. And also now I mentioned you have the water uh, in the back, mm -hmm. the back of the stable. It can be that the rhino is uh, pooing into his water. <laughs> and then it's very nice when uh, a zookeeper can clean it. So I would suggest you provide the water at somewhere, the side of the zookeeper's... Uh, somewhere where yeah, the like yeah, over here, where yeah, they can access yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and something I probably also mentioned now that we were talking about the logs, that was also taken from the husbandry manual because the rhino like to kind of scrape their horn against flat surfaces which is yeah. uh, damaging it. Maybe, maybe a nice thing to know is that uh, for black rhinos, mm -hmm. it's recommended to put trunks uh, to the walls as well. But uh, the black rhino is loving to have a trunk in horizontal position because oh, wow. they like to shrub like this with their nose. Mm -hmm. 
So the, any rhino doesn't have that, and the black rhino has. So even between the different species of rhinos, there's uh, some some tiny differences. And, and the white rhino, because I know in the Bakersberger stable, I know it's very old, but that yeah, stable doesn't have any logs at all. Uh, no, that's true, and uh, I think they would love to uh, have some trunks in their in their mm. enclosure. But it's something uh, we are working on to uh, maybe in the in the future replace the whole stables. So it's uh, it's something uh, we have an eye on, and uh, we we have to we have to improve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so one thing that I kind of struggled to implement, but I think kind of worked out, is that the husband manual mentioned that there should be a separation box for the Indian mm -hmm. rhino, yeah. in case they ever need to uh, like tranquilize one or um, yeah, separate them for whatever reason. So that's um, what I created over here. It's a mm -hmm. lot more closed off. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have water. Yeah, that is uh, one thing. <laughs> That's uh, a shame. It's, it a lot, have... it's a lot smaller, but I think I think the idea I had is that they would never have to be separated for a very long time. Uh, yeah, like it's, it, uh, it's very important. An animal has always access to water, and so you always have to implant that. And uh, as well, this space, this rhino now it's laying down. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, this rhino is cool with this enclosure, but I think it's it's. It's a little small. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really know exactly what the requirements for the, for the separation box, because it really sounded like a very temporary, like, oh, we need to separate them for a very short amount of time sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, because uh, most of its time it will be just spent in here, because we got one stable for the male and one for the female. Yeah. Uh, and then the separation is uh, for what uh, scene, like when there's a calf or something? Uh, let's, yeah, I think that was one. Uh, let's see what it actually said. But then, so um, then you have to make sure that uh, when uh, when there's a calf, it will only leave the zoo when another zoo has room for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, worst case scenario would be uh, a male, a female and a calf, and the calf is getting uh, at the age, it has to be separated from the mom, mm -hmm. and then you have to make sure you have a nice uh, place to hold the calf. Mm. And then you have to question yourself, uh, maybe it will be in this separation enclosure for a couple of months. Uh, is, the, is this separation you build, do you think it's, it's able to hold a rhino for a couple of months? Right, yeah, that's a very good, good point. Or would you say, uh, no, this is only just for in case of emergency, yeah, the, I, the husband run will state it, uh, quote, each indoor exhibit should have one stable which serves as a separation box, be it for giving birth, holding and introducing a new animal or a sick animal. Ah, okay. Okay, so, wait, so I, when I, you look at it in this opinion, uh, then it would be okay. Yeah, well, it still needs water, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just have to, to make sure it, it will get water and food, but... Uh, Maybe for such a, a short amount of time, as in an introduction or something, um, it would be okay. But even then, I think, but now this is the point where I would get to the zookeepers to get some advice. <laughs> even then, I would think that when this introduction doesn't work out as you want to, so the, separate, the introduction is going to take a while, like maybe yeah. two or three weeks, uh, then you have to question yourself, is this space big enough? Yeah, pretty interesting. Like, it took me a very long time to see Hudari outside in the Beeksbergen. Yeah, um, but Hudari <laughs> is, uh, he is a, a male black rhino. Mm -hmm. And a black rhino, an Indian rhino or a white rhino, uh, they are three totally different kinds of species. So so they, they look very similar and they are all <laughs> rhinoceros. but. The, their behaviors are, are extremely, uh, extremely different. I, I was also uh, uh, surprised by that. But I, of course, I, I saw the animal a few times at the safari resort. Mm -hmm. His character is uh, like very, very, very impressive because uh, he, he can be so kind and so cool at one time and, and just in a in a in a snip of a second, he will turn totally mad and and uh, want to attack you, oh, wow. and that's something a, an Indian rhino or a white rhino would never do. You you can't force a rhinoceros to no. uh, get outside. Of course. Clearly, 
So um, we were talking about the uh, hands-on or hands-off approach earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something you might uh, be interested in seeing. I did kind of design all the gates to be as hands-off as possible. So all mm -hmm. the gates can be slid open and closed from the kind of keeper side. Mm -hmm. So over here we've got uh, these sorts of gates for uh, separating them from the pool or not. Mm -hmm. um, and also if we go outdoors, uh, I try to really make all the gates yeah, accessible from um, yeah, out but, of the habitat. Yeah. Now this this gate you're showing now this is this is, uh, this looks a lot like our uh, the hippopotamus uh, gates at Safari Park. Mm -hmm. This is a good one because uh, when you want to uh, give the animal access to the outdoor area, you just have to pull the gate, and when the animal went through, you can put it back uh, into a closed position. Yeah. And that's something. Uh, uh, which is very hard uh, in but with the indoor uh, gates you made, because there, when you want to give the animal access, you have to put it uh, into the enclosure, and when you want to close it, you have to pull it back mm -hmm. towards you. Um, I would always recommend uh, the construction you have at your outdoor gate. Yeah. So when you want to give the animal access, you just pull the gate, and when you want to close it, you have to push it back. Mm -hmm. That will be a lot more comfortable because uh, the animal can get into the opening, and when you then have to pull it, and the animal is going to do this, your whole arm is going to be... Oh, right. Yeah, I, I've, I didn't want to um, block off the hallway with the gate yeah, so that's why yeah, I, I designed understand. it this way but uh, uh, actually nothing is going to change uh, Jurian, because mm -hmm. uh, you just put these three locks at the left side of your gate you're going to put it to the right so the opening yeah. is going to the left and then the only thing which changes is that this position is the closed po uh, the open position yeah. Yeah, oh so like you just make make the gate over here you mean yeah yeah and the, but the only thing which is, and that's just a cost effective thing, is you have to uh, make the stall a little bigger because um, I don't know if you want to give the rhino access to the pool area mm -hmm. this close to the water side. Yeah. So then you have one other option, a, a door which is not uh, manually controlled. Yeah. And then you can choose for an automatic door which the zookeepers can uh, control with buttons. Yeah, yeah. I almost considered making an automatic door for this one because there's no real point where the keepers could access it. But I figured uh, the solution I figured out was that over here you could make wow. a uh, thing to control that door. Wow, <laughs> that's so expensive. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, now, now uh, Julian, when you opening, when you open this door, Mm -hmm. Can you put it in an open position? Yeah, so... Yeah, and now show me the... Okay, and wh now where is the... <laughs> you have this... Oh, crap, yeah. You're right. Yeah, so you, you hold this, uh, <laughs> you hold this uh, piece of iron coming out of the wall. And then what does the iron do? Yeah, no, this doesn't make any sense. No, I yeah. <laughs> because when you put it on this height, it would be... Lovely, and the zookeepers will be forever grateful because even if you are a small zookeeper, you can push all your force yeah. in it to mm -hmm. open or close the door. But uh, where is the iron going? Yeah, no, this this uh, it should be the, it should it, be the other way around. This, high, this, should, will, this should be the closed uh, position, and that should be the open. But even then, I'm not sure if that changes much. Then. Yeah, I think this would this wouldn't work out. <laughs> It and was, it I was think a nice this idea. is a very, 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 very expensive solution. Because how are you going to put this upper half of the wall up in the air? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it would <laughs> it's be like way a, better to do... It's, uh, it's, it's like <laughs> a piece of, of, of concrete <laughs> just up in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this would have to be an automatic, automatic like uh, door. I don't think this will work out. And especially uh, even the, the, the trunks. I see you put uh, the, the trunks yeah. on the doors. 
There would have to they be a, a bit more. The wall. There would have to be a bit more space there. It's too. like Harry Potter. <laughs> No, I, I think you you shouldn't uh, put these uh, trunks uh, on the doors yeah. because uh, the doors. How can I explain? Wait, maybe I make a little sketch. When you have a, a door for rhinos, you have to uh, mention that uh, there will be a rhino of at least a thousand kilograms. Sometimes it will push onto this door. Mm -hmm. So what you want when the door is closed is uh, extreme uh, uh, nice closing door. So yeah. when the door is in free position, you have these pieces. Uh, and uh, you see, this is the door. When I put mm -hmm. through this door, there will be two barricades which will hold the door in place. Yeah. When you want to make trunks on it and you say, I'll make a little bit more space. Then it will go that, from side to side. Yeah, that, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's best to uh, provide a door which will, which will go exactly through these barricades so that when it's closed, it's, it's like optima forma. Mm -hmm. It's like the best closing door ever because it has to hold a whole lot of rhino. And when this rhino is mad, it still yeah. has to hold it. It yeah. especially has to hold it. Yeah, but you can uh, maybe uh, make a door out of wood if you really don't want to have any flat surfaces. I think uh, the flat surfaces, you already put trunks on all of the walls. So this one meter, maybe one and a half meters of flat surface, it wouldn't make a difference. And then there's another thing about this door. It's a, it's a closed door. So uh, you just mentioned this exhibit uh, is this separation exhibit is for uh, introduction, for introducing new animals. But how would this animal ever meet its neighbor? It would be best if this door wouldn't be all closed, but this, it would be best if this door was just a, a fenced door so they can have contact and maybe the fencing has to be a little bit more solid so there's a little less space between these uh, these loose uh, bars but they can sniff each other and they mm -hmm. maybe they can make nosy contact maybe they can see each other and maybe they can hear each other so they will you can uh, as a zookeeper monitor if this is going to be a nice introduction and for that reason it's also very 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 important that the zookeepers have sight on this door. Mm -hmm. They have to see it. Now th this door uh, from from yeah. this zookeeper's area. Yeah, look, you you, you don't even see, see it. it's there. So yeah. how would you ever uh, make sure there is a nice introduction? Yeah, you can see it from this okay. way. But what now if the Indian rhino is standing with his ass to watch you <laughs> in this position? You yeah. wouldn't see a thing of what's happening there. So I think it would be best uh, to uh, redesign this this piece this part of this yeah. table because this this water has to move anyway because it has yeah. to be close to the keepers so you'd yeah. Yeah. put the door maybe more over here so that you got uh, a better view of it yeah. over there yeah okay i think we almost have had everything of course here's a little kitchen area for the keepers they have uh, a nice plan nice yeah of course got a someone someone took a plan to work this that's a little something. cozy they have a nice view this is good yeah now there's, yeah, uh, there's, is, there's uh, one question I, I, I have, yeah. because uh, you, you told me, you asked me to uh, be as critic, uh, critic, critic, critical as, as possible, as, yeah. as, I, as I can. Um, so now, there is a water pool in your, in your stables. Mm -hmm. Indian rhinos really like to shit in that water, <laughs> so it's going to be dirty water. So now I, I miss one major thing in your stables. There's no filtration. There's no filtration at all. There, there is. Or maybe a, uh, you didn't. You didn't tell me about it. There, there is a little grate here, where they uh, they can drain oh, it. Oh wow! Okay, and where where's the water going then? Um, so the idea is that it's kind of uh, from the uh, the person who's making the zoo, mm -hmm. is that this is a dried up riverbed, uh, oh. that they turn into the pool. Uh, over here is a little dam which goes flows under the. Uh, uh -huh, the, uh -huh. the stall so i'm guessing that there's like yeah all sorts of water uh, maintenance and filtration kind of under here uh, but i haven't made that accessible in any way so uh -huh. the drainage will will end up out here 
-hmm. but um, yeah, no, I haven't made a, a proper place where the water gets uh, filtrated. I think it would be a very nice idea to <laughs> very overthink that part mm -hmm. because uh, the Indian rhino is, I think, it's one of the most expensive animals uh, you could e even carry uh, as a zoo because of this system. More than a hippo? Uh, actually, they, the the whole installation around it is it's very similar to that of a hippo's. Uh, the only the only difference uh, is that not all of the most of the zoos want to have an under uh, underwater view with their hippotomosis uh, mm -hmm. enclosures, and they don't uh, do that with the Indian rhino enclosure. So the water doesn't have to be as clean, all, all clean, so that you can see through the water. So that would be it, it would be a little less expensive, but it still would be a, a, it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge investment this part of installation work and uh, in your stable there there's no installation provided no no room for installation and maybe it's mm. in the basement but then you uh, have to oversee that uh, and, and, this make, and make a basement because <laughs> there's yeah, currently no uh, basement you yeah. you have to yeah but you you uh, you would would at minimum would have to make a stairway to the mm -hmm. to the basement yeah to uh, do main entrance to the to the installations. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've missed. Um, there's one little thing because um, the uh, husband Emmanuel mentioned that when the female rhino is uh, in oestrus or like getting ready to uh, maybe have a baby, uh, you might want to put up a visual barricade between the male and the female. So uh, I put up some hooks in the ceiling where they can hang up, like maybe a cloth or. Something. I'm not sure if that would be sufficient. Uh, uh, I think you have to overthink how would they do it. Mm -hmm. How would they? How would they get to these hooks? Because uh, it's it's easily to make these hooks when the stable is still empty and you're building it. But uh, when the rhinos are in it, how would you place the cloth or something uh, onto the ceiling? Yeah, and that's something you you should overthink. And uh, uh, there's there's a zoo uh, in the southern of Holland. I, I'm I'm sure you know it. Like it's Gaia Zoo. Mm -hmm. When you see the giraffe stables in Gaia Zoo, they have this this fantastic piece of art in a giraffe uh, stable. The the fencing between those, it, it's like bars, so you can see through it. But when they want to give the giraffes rest, they can turn it like 45 degrees. It, it, it will be a solid wall of wood. It's a very nice system, and, and um, I don't think it will be suitable for uh, rhinos, but it's it's just an example of uh, uh, how inventive you could be providing <laughs> this. Um, in Dierijk, we simply uh, just put it a, a solid wall of trunks between one of the enclosures and the bar. One thing I would also uh, uh, would ask to you is, uh, do you know which position this stable in is in? Which side of your stable is uh, facing the north? Ooh, that is a very good question. I and I, I'm, 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 you're you're making me a little afraid because I did not take this into account when I uh, when I yeah, built this. I, I I already see something. So yeah, we Chat. got the we got the east over there. Yeah. And the north is that way. So, okay, so, so uh, the the morning sun is uh, Co getting coming, into the building coming through, through these the windows. windows. Yes. So when I'm uh, I, okay, now I am a zookeeper and I'm entering the stables in the morning, and I want to see if everything's all right with all of my animals. I'm being and blinded I'm by into the, the light. boxes. <laughs> then the sun is uh, shitting in my eyes. <laughs> yep. I can't see a thing. So yeah. I would uh, recommend you to put these uh, windows on the above. other side. Uh, yeah, the hallway of the the, the zookeepers. Basically so just, just fl uh, flip the entire. Yeah, flip. yeah, I would do that because then uh, you you're making sure you would never have the sun in your face. Yeah, that's something I hadn't thought of at all. Maybe I I, I want to ask one more question. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if we're running out of time, but I'm, I'm, it's I'm, fine. I'm, I'm, I I really like to do this. Um, now the outdoor. How is the outdoor uh, area? Uh, 
yeah Bill? that's that's something did you, that did you already think about that um the person who who makes this zoo is going to do the outdoor exhibit i'm not sure how far along he is i think he's... no but uh, I, I mean the outdoor area of this table so you, oh, you of right. course you have your stables and then uh uh among the stables you have your pants usually so that's a separation area between the outdoor exclosure ex yeah. enclosure and the uh, stables so that's kind of what this area is going to be so there's one over here and one over here and uh, there's probably going to be a split between the habitat and mm -hmm. you've got like the two habitats kind of like this that's good and but now um when you read the husbandry guidelines mm -hmm. i think you are aware of it um when the animal which is separated wants to go outside does it have a separation outdoor area um, or is it just uh, fit in this nine square meters uh, <laughs> area all of his life? <laughs> um, I think what I had in mind is that they could, when the other rhinos are, are outside, uh, they might be able to have it use this sort of space. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. And now uh, there's, an, there's another uh, um, question, like uh, when all of the animals... In the, I don't know where this zoo is located, but when mm -hmm. it's winter time, um, you have to make sure your animals can get in all of the time. Uh, but you also have to make sure your zookeepers can clean uh, the stables. Mm -hmm. So it's it's important that when the zookeepers have to get into the stable to clean it up, the rhino has to go anywhere. And for that, uh, Actually, these pens are really, really, really handy because you can put them outside for a little while. They have they have a fresh breath of air. Mm -hmm. You can uh, clean the indoor enclosure, and when you're done, you can get the rhino back in. So yeah. I would recommend to uh, provide each indoor enclosure with an outdoor enclosure uh, to make sure you can always clean up the mess they make. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the zoo, is, the zoo is located in Japan, so I think ah. that's definitely something that would be necessary. I think so too. And uh, I also think that uh, you have to overthink that how would the zookeepers... Uh, can, can we have a top view of your stable without the roof? Ooh, let's see if I can... Or uh, do you have to delete all... Uh, uh, <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. Away wow. it goes. I think it's oh, all grouped oh. up pretty neatly, so... Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Okay, now, okay, now, now let's um, pretend we are zookeepers and we want to clean up the stables. Yeah. How are we going to do that? So... How would, how would we get into the stables? <laughs> and now you also have to uh, 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 overthink that this is a rhino. So it will be about a hundred of kilograms of poo each day, each rhino. <laughs> And are you going to do that all oh, with a shovel? Or will you do it um, with like bigger equipment? Or uh, have you have you thought about that for one minute? I guess it's uh, pretty hard to get a wheelbarrow in here. <laughs> <laughs> I also which, think so. Which would be uh, pretty useful. Uh, yeah, unless the rhinos are really all the way outside in their enclosure, then you can enter through this door. Okay, so how, how would you make this turn? Uh, well, with a wheelbarrow, I, I think it'd be doable. But with heavier equipment... It would I, I don't think be... there's any zookeeper uh, going to clean up a rhino stable with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Anno 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I think they want to use some bigger equipment and actually that, that is necessary because you also have to think about the health of your zookeepers. Yeah, it's and, not good um, for their backs to shovel. It's not very this. good for their backs. So I, I, I would recommend uh, make sure that they can get into the stables, uh, bigger equipment. And now... So what, what sort of equipment would that be? If you can, you could say it in Dutch if you don't know an English word for it, but... A shovel chair. They really want to use a shovel. Okay, so that's like a small loader, I think. is. A it's a, it's like a loader, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you have to think about uh, when they want to get into the stable, they want to get to, to all three of the stables. 
they will also want to get uh, into the room where the bath is located because yeah. in this hallway between the stables so the piece of concrete uh, uh, between these tables where the rhinos can walk they can also poo mm -hmm. so uh, c could you imagine how uh, that would be a mission impossible yeah. you have to be a very very experienced loader driver to get through these tables mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's very good to uh, I, I think it would be good to overthink how a zookeeper would work in these tables because uh, of course you have to think about animal wel welfare and and that's that's of course it, it, it's it's one of the major things yeah yeah i mean to go back to the winter example if you had to do this all by hand the rhinos had to be outside for a very long time yeah which would also yeah. not be good for them yeah so so uh, when you look at the rhino tables in dierenrijk uh, and when you look at it from a zookeeper's perspective uh, there's one door in uh, there's only one door in the in the entire building um, which they have to use to uh, get into all of these tables oh. that's why uh, in Dierenrijk the concrete piece of the bath is in the back of this table mm -hmm. it's not only because the guests then have very good access and very good viewing on the pool where the rhinos uh, uh, swim in or chill in uh, it's also because uh, the zookeepers can get into the building at the right side and then they, ca they can go into a straight line. They can yeah. uh, move into all of the enclosures. Yeah. So these gates would have to just be adjusted so that a, a loader can kind of drive through them. Actually, it's, 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 uh, your, your, your design isn't that bad because you're only missing one door, mm -hmm. which is now in our back. So yeah, so you, you're just missing like a door either over here or yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. For the three uh, main rooms, and then we yeah, also and have then we have the separation room, box, which is a disaster anyway. So. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's a disaster anyway. But it, it's also very good accessible uh, through the door you made there for transportations, yeah. I think. Yeah. So uh, that that would be okay. Right. Well, Jurien. Thank Got you. some work to do. Yeah, I think I do. I'm gonna have to apologize to the person who asked me to build this. <laughs> yeah, it will be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Uh, I think you, you did very well for so. I, I I don't think you had any advice from a zookeeper. No, definitely not. When I would uh, when I would have to design it on my own, I would also make make these mistakes uh, when I did it for the first time. So uh, I think you did a very good job, and you. You overthought a lot of things very well, and you read the husbandry guidelines, which is a very good thing. So you're you're in a, you're in a good way, but uh, there's still a, a way to go. Yeah, well, there's always more to learn. Always more to learn. <laughs> I mean, that's actually maybe a good question. Are there any things that came after the fact in the rhino stall in in the Reich that came up that you didn't encounter for or that the zookeepers had trouble with after the fact that it was built? Well, one thing, but we we did know that it could be an issue. The biodegradable floor, so the uh, wood uh, chips we use in the outdoor area. We also used it uh, in the in the area between the outdoor enclosure and the and the stables. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, the draining was it, it was it wasn't that good, so it became like a water bath. <laughs> and there was a, a, so much water in it that the all the wood chips were like when Floating the rhinos stepped on it, it, it was like it was <laughs> it was so wet. And uh, there was something uh, we we had to overthink. Uh, so we solved it, uh, uh, of course, um, by just putting some some nice draining uh, uh, in in the bottom. So that's something you would uh, overthink. And as well, uh, all these um, doors. They are sliding, and uh, usually mm. they are sliding through a rail at the top, top. also yeah. a rail at the bottom. And uh, uh, we made this mistake earlier in another rhino enclosure, uh, because when you do that, the wood chips will also get into the bottom rail, yeah, they got stuck. so the door will stuck. And uh, that's uh, why it's very good, and you did that actually, uh, to only use the top rail. 
And then the, what you do have to do I do is, have them on the outside, but... Yeah, putting this, this, and <laughs> you actually did it, wow. Uh, <laughs> putting this piece of iron uh, at the other end of the door. So when you close the door, it will be locked. Yeah. Like in, uh, but but uh, this is something zookeepers would, they, th this needs daily main entrance because the rhinos will get sand into it and wood mm -hmm. chips and maybe some poo. So uh, when this is uh, getting dirty, uh, the door wouldn't close anymore. So that's that's something you, you should overthink very, very well. How, how would these doors uh, hold their cells when in use? That's yep. uh, something uh, yeah. uh, I, I I always think too uh, too easy on that. Yeah, so it's really easy to put this down, but then oh yeah, when the dirt and the poo and the yeah, everything yeah. else so comes, it does, does, it, so, does no, it hold and then up? And the rhino is yeah. coming back and it put its horn through the through the gate, which is still a little bit open, and it the rhino always wins. <laughs> so uh, with the uh, black rhino stable, we also put it uh, like a brake system into the doors mm -hmm. uh, you can pull or push the door but when the rhino is wanting to do something else you just have to leave the handle then these this thing is going back onto the ground oh, it locks when like you a, release it that's really yeah, smart there's, there's like a tooth uh shaped uh rail in the in the floor so it will lock after one of these toots so the rhino wouldn't uh, uh make or whole oh, body. that's really smart. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I picture. So that's a, that's a proven technique. That's so really this cool. is inside information. You but also like dirt and, with anyone. But also dirt and stuff can get into the teeth, right? Yeah. So uh, that's exactly why uh, why I said uh, you have to make sure there is main entrance every day. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons in Bixenberg we chose to not provide these wood chips on the floor. On all of the floor, we just provided uh, a concrete floor for the for the zookeepers to make sure they they can clean it up well, especially uh, for around these doors to mm -hmm. make sure the braking system wouldn't be uh, dirted every day, and uh, to sleep on we put some nice beds of nine square meters where the rhinos can rest on, and they they actually use it a lot. Uh, but the rest of the stables will 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 not be this messed up all the yeah. time. That's uh, that's really clever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very very much. This was super insightful. I hope uh, everyone watching also uh, picked up a thing or two about this because I sure did. Yeah. And I uh, hope you can fix the roof. <laughs> oh yeah. Just <laughs> here, here it goes. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. I'm a, I'm a really fast builder. <laughs> yeah. I can only dream of building this fast. <laughs> you you do play Planet Zoo, right? I think that might be an interesting bit of no, trivia. No, 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 no. Oh. Maybe uh, you you know Stein? Yes, yeah, Stein. I, I did. I, sh I I didn't shake his hand because that's not allowed at the moment. But <laughs> we did yeah. our elbow thing. <laughs> Stein is uh, Stein is loving to play Planet Zoo, and uh, we 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 really like to hang out with each other. And uh, Stein. Uh, Sometimes he he wants me to play uh, Planet Zoo together, but <laughs> actually we we always uh, capture ourselves then at the middle of the night, about half five, half past four in the night, <laughs> uh, waking up like whoa, <laughs> what happened? It's late already, so it's not it's not a good idea when I play Planet Zoo. And actually, <laughs> actually I'm I'm playing Planet Zoo in real life every day. So, yeah, that's uh, true. I think everyone's pretty jealous about that. Yeah, but I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it, this game is like wow. It, 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 look at these details. It's it's so nice, but uh, yeah, for me, I, I I don't think I should uh, put any more time in making zoos, even online. <laughs> yeah, you you do it plenty, right? Okay, well, um, thank you and thanks everyone for watching, and uh, you might see. Rick again uh, some other time on my channel. Yeah, I'm, have... I'm, I'm looking forward to you, <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> you made you made one of our zoos in Planet Zoo. Wow, I'm 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 very very happy about that. I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to to visit that zoo online. Right. Yeah, it it uh, soon I hope. <laughs> I keep I keep delaying myself by diving into another loophole of details. Um, <laughs> And there's a lot of details, and then yeah, actually at the moment, uh, of course, you're almost finished, and then we decided to redo about 20% of the park, <laughs> so <laughs> that would be a shame for you. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm finishing 
everything before the changes first and then after that we're gonna dive into all the changes which i'm really looking forward to as well because the new area is nice. looking well, very I'm, nice i'm sure we'll keep you busy yeah i'm sure and <laughs> if if uh, if not i'll just start on the like as well <laughs> wow that would be that would be a major project as well yeah well um thanks once again i think it's the third time i said it and um yeah goodbye i'm really bad at ending videos so we're just gonna <laughs> let it go here bye bye Bye-bye.